A lot of students remember, okay, just a basic is when they're graphing sine, they think, okay, it starts at zero and then it goes to the max, zero, min, zero, max, zero, min, zero, max. So basically the zeros are alternating with the maxes and the mins, okay? But with cosine, cosine starts at the maximum, goes to zero, minimum, zero, max. So if you can kind of remember, they have the same shape, but sine is starting at this midline, whereas cosine is starting at the maximum. Okay, so you're with me so far. So let's get into these more challenging examples now. So example one, okay, you can see that this is in this form. Y equals A sine B X minus H plus K. But one thing you want to notice is you want just one X, okay, here inside of these parentheses. But see how there's that one half there? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to factor out that one half. So if I factor it out, and this is where sometimes students make a little bit of a, a little bit of a simple error. What do you think this value is going to be right here? Any ideas? What do you think? Well, this is going to be 2 pi. Now, how do I know it's 2 pi? Well, if I distribute the 1 half times 2 pi, see how I get back pi? So what you're doing is you're factoring out 1 half, but you actually have to do the reciprocal. You actually have to multiply this by 2. But you can double check your work. If you distribute, you can see you're getting this original quantity back. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to analyze what is the period. And you can use this formula, period equals 2 pi divided by b, this b value. And that works for sine and cosine. 2 pi is the normal period. Remember, once around the unit circle, 2 pi. But in this case, see how it's 1 half? So what's 2 pi divided by 1 half? Well, that's going to be 4 pi, okay? Because when you divide by 1 half, it's like multiplying by the reciprocals. It's multiplying by 2, so that's 4 pi. Now what I like to do from here is I like to, you know, draw my graph. But now that I know my period is 4 pi, I like to divide this into four pieces and make my scale pi. So in this case, I'm just going to count by pi. So this is 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, and so on. You can go here to the left, negative pi, negative 2 pi, and so on. And then over here, let's see, this is 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Now, you can see in this basic graph here, H and K, that's our shift. That's what's going to pick up the graph, shift it left and right, up and down. But remember, the one that's grouped with the X actually has the opposite effect. So if this was like minus pi, you would actually be going positive pi to the right. If it's plus pi, then you're going to go to the left. So here we have plus 2 pi. That means we're actually going to go left 2 pi. The minus 3 means we're going to go down 3. So let me change my graph a little bit to make sure we have enough room here. So 1, 2, 3. Kind of condense it down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in this midline like this. And at negative 2 pi, I'm going to draw in like a axis like that. So what I'm doing is I'm thinking about instead of graphing from here like we normally do, let's think about graphing from right here. Okay. So what we've done is we've taken into account the shift. We've taken into account the period, which is 4 pi. And we're dividing it up into four pieces, just like the four quadrants over here. And then now all we have to do is look at this negative 2. Now, what do you think the negative does to the graph? Well, if you were to put a negative in front of the sign, it's going to make all the y values the opposite. If they're positive, they're going to become negative. If they're negative, they're going to be positive. So it reflects it over the x-axis. And then the 2 is the amplitude. That's going to stretch it vertically. So what we're going to do here is normally sine would look like this. We're going to reflect it. So it's going to go, instead of going up, it's going to go down like that. And it's going to stretch it. So let's see. So this is going to put us at... Sine starts at the midline, so we're going to start right here. Then we're going to go down to negative 2. We're going to go back to the midline. We're going to go up 2, okay, from, from the midline. So that's going to put us right here. And then we're going to go back to the midline, and it's going to repeat. Now, how did I know, you know, to graph like, like I did just like that? Well, remember when I took the period 4 pi and I divided by 4? So each step, I was just going 1 pi on my x direction and then I just had to calculate you know my amplitude was 2 so I was going you know down 2 or up 2 from that midline so that was a good example we're going to do a cosine graph next but before I get into that I just wanted to mention that if you're preparing for the ACT or the SAT the math sections uh, check out my two video courses I've got one for the ACT it goes through 65 concepts one for the SAT it goes through 39 concepts and we go through a teaching section we go through uh, formulas we go through example problems and a lot of students have already taken these uh, video courses and have reported back that it's helped them improve their scores so I'm sure it'll help you too but what you can do is go over there check out the three free lessons uh, for each of the two courses you'll get some benefit from those definitely to help you raise your score right away and if you're interested then you can go on and purchase the course and take the other lessons 
If you're interested in private tutoring, you can also contact me about that for ACT, SAT, or just for your math class. I'm available for, for online tutoring. But let's go through this last example now. So you can see here we've got a cosine graph. The amplitude's one half, the vertical shifts up two. We've got a little bit of a mess here, okay? What we want is we just want it to look like this where there's one X inside of the parentheses. So we're gonna actually factor out that four. Now again, don't make that simple mistake that some students make of factoring out the four out of this term but not this term. So you wanna factor that out. So this is actually gonna make this, let's see, x minus pi over eight. Now again, you can check your work. If you distribute the four, you're gonna get back the pi over two. So you know you're on the right track. Okay, so now, hmm, let's take a look at our graph. So we know that the b value is four. If we use our formula, period equals two pi divided by b, we're getting a period of pi over two. Now, again, you can multiply that by one fourth or divide it by four, but what we're gonna use for our scale is pi over eight. Okay, so our scale, like how we did over there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to uh, graph this. So I'm gonna say one pi over eight, two pi over eight, which is pi over four, three pi over eight, four pi over eight, which is pi over two, five pi over eight, six pi over eight, which is three pi over four, and so on. And we can go this direction as well, so negative pi over eight, negative uh, pi over four, which is two pi over eight, and so on. And then let's see over here, we're gonna make this uh, one, and we're gonna make this negative one. Okay, uh, let's see here. So let's make this a little bit, let's make this like maybe one right here, and we'll make this two right here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the shift into account. So the plus two means it's shifting the graph up two. So I'm gonna draw in like this, uh, this midline right here. Okay, that's gonna be like our, our x-axis. The minus pi over eight is gonna shift it right pi over eight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw in kind of like our new y-axis. We're gonna think of this as our starting point or our new origin. Okay, instead of graphing from here, we're gonna graph from here. The amplitude is one half. It's a cosine graph. So remember, cosine starts at the maximum. So I'm gonna start right up here. Let's say this is three up here. I'm gonna start at a half, so it's gonna be right there. Okay, and then it's gonna go down to the midline, that's zero, down to negative a half, back to zero, that's the midline, back to positive a half. This is a little bit further over, right about there. So that's it. So a quick and easy way to do this, again, is just to go through the same steps like we did here. Think of that shifted origin and graph from that point, draw in those midlines, and also draw in that new y-axis. That'll give you a little bit of a better idea about how to graph these more challenging sine and cosine graphs. So, I hope this helped you understand it a lot better. Subscribe to the channel. Check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring. And I look forward to helping you in the future math videos. I'll talk to you soon.